good fun for a dollar, isn't it? For a dollar. So now usually magicians don't share their secrets, right? I'm gonna give you guys some things that you can do just to mess with people, because the most fun doing magic is just to mess with people, right? Give them stories to tell. So here's, here's one you guys can do. Next time you're having a day where you're just feeling kind of down about yourself, you want a little pick-me-up, go to, I call this the self-esteem store. You guys probably call it Walmart, but... <laughs> Whenever I go shopping there and I look at all the other people, I always just feel a lot better about myself <laughs> and my own life and choices I've made. So, just me. All right, so you go to the pet section and get one of these. All right, it's a little squeaky toy. It's a little dog squeaky toy, right? This was a dollar at Walmart. It's a, this one's a sheep. Um, it's a pretty one. You can tell by their eyes. My uncle in Wyoming taught me that. <laughs> All right, now you gotta get the squeaker out of it. Yeah, you know what I was talking about too, huh? All right, now I gotta get the squeaker out, huh? All right, my uncle taught me that. All right, now, with this squeaker in your mouth, you now have the ability to make anything you want squeak anywhere you go. That's good fun for a dollar, isn't it? For a dollar! I know, you had to look, huh? He has to look every time. He can't help it. You try and look away. He's trying to look away, but he's side-eyeing. Because you can't. Uh... Real life is the best. That's where the best stories come from. I've got, a, I've got a dog that travels everywhere with me. It's a medical alert service dog. And the way this works, any facility I go into, they have to let me take my dog. By law, they can only ask me two questions. Is this a service dog? I say, yes, it is. What service does it provide? I said, I've got a medical condition. She's got to travel with me. And that's it. Facilities I go into can't ask me any more questions. But people, people ask questions. Well, what kind of service? I go, well, I've got a condition. She says, well, what kind of condition? Well, she just lets me know. Well, go, well like what? what? What is it? I go, you mean you want to know what's wrong with me? I go, yeah, yeah. Is it cancer? Is it uh, seizure disorder? Is it diabetes? And isn't that none of their business, right? Isn't, haven't they crossed a line, right? So if they cross a line, <laughs> it's okay for me to cross some lines, right? So I make things up. And if you do it with a straight face, people believe you. My favorite is, I tell people, well, I have IBS. Yeah, I have irritable bowel syndrome, and uh, she lets me know if I'm going to poop myself. I don't always know right away, you know, and she can sense it somehow. I think it's because her nose is closer to my butt. I'm not sure how it works. Maybe she catches a whiff of something before it comes out. I don't know. Maybe she hears a little gurgling. I don't, I don't know how it works. She, oh, matter of fact, she's acting up. I should probably get going just to... They got it coming, don't they? <laughs> I was... Uh... I was at a casino out in California, Jackson Rancheria, this uh, Indian casino, and this lady just would not stop. She kept asking, I just need to. And it's a 17 pound miniature Australian shepherd, doesn't look like your typical server. She just kept asking, well, what is it? Is it cancer? Is it diabetes? Is it diabetes? Because I know they can smell insulin changes. In you. And she just would not stop. And I saw, so I, with this straight face, I, swear, I said, uh, Dog's name's Ritalin. I have ADD, and that dog helps me to focus. I swear, she puts her hand on my shoulder. She goes, oh, my son has your condition. <laughs> she says, tell me, does the dog really help? I didn't answer her right away. I thought about the consequences to my answer <laughs> and how it might affect their family life and everything. <laughs> yeah, get your boy a puppy. It'll help him do homework, right? That lady had it coming, didn't she? I was, uh, I was at a mall in Sacramento, and the security guard comes up. He goes, sir, is this a, a CNI dog? I go, you mean service dog? He goes, is this a CNI dog? It's not a CNI dog. It's not supposed to be in here. I go, you mean, I'm trying to educate. You mean a service dog? He goes, no, it's got to be a CNI dog. I go, yeah, we're just looking around. <laughs> so 
so twice I've had this happen. Twice I've had this happen. Um, both times, 20-something-year-old blonde girls have said, not that there's anything wrong with blondes. I don't, I don't do blonde jokes. My fiance is blonde. I, I bought her an AM, FM radio, and it took her a month to figure out she could play it at nighttime, too. <laughs> I know, we'll give him a second, huh? <laughs> we were watching the news the other day, all right, and uh, there was this flooding going on in Brazil, and on the news crawler it said one Brazilian killed in flooding, and she turned to me, she went, how many's a Brazilian? <laughs> it's a lot. It's uh, less than a kajillion. A lot of zeros, tragic flooding. That's what. <laughs> so honestly, twice I swear to you, twice I've had this happen. It doesn't look like your typical service dog. She's 17 pounds, got her little service dog vest on her. 20-something year old blonde. I look right at the dog, right, and they look straight at me and they go, "Oh my gosh, is this a seeing eye dog?" I looked him right in the eye and I said. No, the dog helps me to hear me when people are talking to me. Now I lost you, huh? Yeah, I went too far, didn't I? I did. I see you laughing covering your faces like you don't want people to see that you're laughing at that. But that's funny. I don't care. <laughs> uh, true stories, true stories. So. Oh, we should do some magic. You guys want to see some magic? Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Sleeves up, because they always say magicians in sleeves. So I'm going to roll my sleeves up. Now, uh, most of you have seen a magician produce a live animal before. Uh, usually it's a dove or a rabbit. Now, there's two reasons for this. One, doves and rabbits won't bite you, okay? The other reason is you can cram them into an incredibly small space, and they won't struggle or make any noise while you shove them in there. <laughs> and to demonstrate this, I'm going to produce a live dove from a deck of cards and an empty scarf with my sleeves rolled up. You're going to be amazed seeing it up close. You'll never see a magician do this this close ever again. Sleeves up, no tuxedo. Usually it's a tuxedo, long sleeves, a lot of prancing around. I'm not good at prancing. Some guys are good at prancing. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. All right? So here we go. And when you see this dove, I expect some applause because I gave up a lot of my social life to learn this crap. All right? <laughs> All right, little uh, laptop drum roll from the audience. It's just easy that way. And she was so amazed too. She was like, oh my gosh, it's a dove. And then there she was just confused. <laughs> uh, so you want to have fun at McDonald's? All right, all the little kids playing in the ball pit, you know? You take one ball out and you make it squeak. And you throw it back in there with all the other balls. And you go, all right, kids, $10 and a Happy Meal for whichever kid can find the squeaky ball. Go. You can go to a movie now. And you can come back two hours later and your dumb kids are still in there trying to, they're making piles and sorting them. It's like a dollar babysitter right there is what that is. <laughs> My sister has a three-year-old and a cat. I thought it'd be funny to make the cat squeak, right? Go, get him. About an hour later, we found the three-year-old hiding in the closet, just gleasing the crap out of that cat. That's a, I hate cats. That's a good use for a cat right there. All right, guys, next time you go get a physical... You're ahead of me, aren't you? You know what I'm talking about. That moment that most of us are a little uncomfortable with, that's the moment, right in the middle of that exam. You go. 
You went too far. We're all done. You went too far. You found the squeaky toy. We're all done. Right? For a dollar! He'll remember that the rest of his life. <laughs> all right, ladies, I don't want you to feel left out, okay? Next time you go get a mammogram. <laughs> and right when they got you squished in there all real tight, you go. Huh? <laughs> They'll remember you, won't they, huh? You get a story, they get a story, everybody wins for a dollar! <laughs> all right, I should put this away before I swallow it, because it makes your fart sound funny. <laughs> And farts are funny. If you don't think they are, then we can't be friends, all right? All right, so here's one you can do. Here's one. You know when you have one of those really smelly ones and you want everybody to take a... You know what I'm talking about, right? Look at the look on his face. He's already laughing, right? You know what I'm talking about. So here's what you do. Just as you... And you want everybody to just take a big whiff of it. Just as you let it out, you go, Hey, do you smell smoke in here? And what happens, everyone in their minds, they become like a CSI detective and they're gonna take a big sample of air in to see if they can detect little particles of smoke. But what happens is they take a big air sample in and they detect little particles of poop that came out of your butt. That's, that doesn't even cost a dollar, that's free. You're using that one, aren't you? Yeah, he's gonna be on the way home, you be careful. He goes, honey, I think the tires are burning. Uh, that's good fun. So my favorite place to do magic um, is uh, in an elevator. Because you're stuck, right? There's a weird psychology. In it. You ever notice that in an elevator? People can be talking, talking, jabbering. As soon as you get in that elevator and those doors close, everybody stops talking, right? It's a perfect place to mess with people. I use a couple things. Because it is a fun place to mess with people. You can't go anywhere. So you get some of these teeth, right? That gives you a whole different look, don't it? Right? <laughs> One little thing can make such a difference in your appearance. And what I'll do is I'll get in the elevator and I'll stand in front of the buttons. So like when people get in, they can't push the button for their floor because I'm standing, you know, you can't talk normal with these teeth in your mouth, all right? They get in the way, but if you talk in a Southern drawl, it comes out real natural, don't it? <laughs> that explains a lot, don't you think? <laughs> They don't have an accent in the South. They just got crappy teeth. <laughs> I'm glad you laughed at that because I do the show in Mississippi. Nobody laughed at that. I don't think that was funny at all. So I'll have this hidden in my hand and I'll have it all wound up before I get in there. So I'll block all the buttons. After the door's closed, I reach over and I push the button for the very top floor of the building. You get this. Ooh. Damn, what floor are you going to? You push a button. <laughs> Nobody's going to touch nothing. We're all going to ride all the way to the top together. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> That's good fun. That is good fun right there. These are fun, guys. You go to a sporting event, you know, halftime comes, there's like 50 million guys all in there peeing at the same time, right? And you just step away from the urinal to zip up your pants. I won't do that in San Francisco again. <laughs> Everybody wants to be your friend. <laughs> All right, so here's one of my favorites, so I'll do this. I don't even smoke, but I always take a pack of cigarettes with me, if I'm, just in case I'm gonna be in an elevator, because people are so uptight about cigarette smoke anymore, so I'll do this in an elevator, just to mess with people. I'll get out a pack of cigarettes, I'll take out one cigarette. Then I'll start looking for a lighter, like I'm gonna smoke it right then, right there, right there in the elevator. People give you the dirtiest looks. <laughs> There's always one lady, always one lady. She'll speak up for everyone else in the elevator. She'll say, sir, 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 excuse me. You can't smoke that in here. And I'll do this.
Fine, then I won't smoke it. Huh? That's an elevator ride they'll never forget, will they? Huh? Don't tell children and grandchildren about the guy that snorted the cigarette up his nose in the elevator, right? I'm just giving them stories to tell. That's my job, right? Isn't it just to go? I know, now you're all looking at me like, what the? All right, here's what my kids will have me do um, if we go to a fast food place. But here's a tip for you. If you're going to make mess with somebody who makes your food for you, always mess with them after. Yeah, you've worked at fast food, huh? They're getting more than special sauce, aren't they? So I'll do this in the elevator or in the, at the fast food place. Excuse me. Can I get another straw? I can't get this straw to fit my cup. <laughs> They're going to have a story to tell when they get home, aren't they? <laughs> Actually, I found that at a cocaine party at, uh, <laughs> at Whitney Houston's house. It was in the. Uh, is, it, is it still too soon? Is it, is it, I gotta tell you, true story, the night Whitney Houston died, I was working at uh, Wise Guys Comedy Club in Ogden, and right when I get to the club, they go, we don't know if you heard Whitney Houston died. I go, no, I didn't even hear it on the news driving up. They go, it just happened like minutes ago. And so after the first show, I'm thinking, Whitney Houston, when am I gonna have another show the night that Whitney Houston died, right? I go, I gotta do a joke. And so between shows, I'm thinking, oh, cocaine, the straw, yeah. And so I pull the straw, and I go, I got this at a cocaine party at Whitney Houston's house. And it was dead silent, just like that. And I go, too soon? And a guy in the back of the room yells at me. She died two hours ago! <laughs> Apparently that's too soon. So. <laughs> I know, you people are hiding their faces. I shouldn't laugh at that. Oh, it is fun doing magic for messing with people, it is. That is. I've got. This is so nice to be here. I've got four children. It's just nice to be anywhere. I got to be honest with you. It's uh, <laughs> four is too many, <laughs> right? Two you can handle. One in each hand, right? You can control that. Three kids. You can always clip that one trying to get away, right? You do what you got to do. Once you have four kids, it puts you in a whole new automotive category, right? Who? By applause. Who in here has four more children? By applause. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can't have a normal car. You can't have just a front and a back seat. You now have to have the third row. And you can't reach that one in the back. <laughs> they need to be reached once in a while, you know? I think timeout, timeouts, really? I think our prisons are full of timeout kids. Don't you? Right? A few more kids without a swat on the butt, maybe they wouldn't be in there, right? I grew up in the days when parents could leave a mark on their children. And I understand going too far. I understand that. But you know what? When you can leave a little mark, I think they learn quicker, right? Right? They remember it longer. It lasts longer. And you, and it, you only have to do it once. I, I, you get a cigarette burn, you don't sit in your dad's chair anymore, do you? Right? I still won't sit in my dad's chair. I can remember. Oh, uh, that row in the back, right? And then we didn't mouth off to my mom if we were in the back seat either because my mom had that sweet, that reach around. I remember sitting in the back seat thinking, she can't reach me here. And, wow, right? I think she could dislocate her shoulder to swing that thing around like, like that. And if we were mouthing off in the back of the station wagon, that didn't stop my mom either because we didn't have to wear seatbelts. Oh yeah, we're mouthing off in the back. My mom would hit the brakes, skid that car through an intersection, slide us to the front, and then beat the crap out of us. Cause that's how it was back then, right? I know, I know. It's scary having kids. Three boys and a girl. That's what I've got, three boys and a girl. We used to have meetings. We used to try to decide um, which one we're gonna get rid of. Cause that's, uh, <laughs> it's hard once you have them to decide. Right? Three boys. The oldest boy is my namesake. I'm Brad Jr. He's Brad the third. Um, the girl, got to keep the girl. She was the only girl. Um, youngest boy, he's the baby boy. Right? He'll always be the baby boy. So it was always that boy in the middle. That's the one we always... He was the one that was good all the time. I, I think he knew. <laughs> I 
I'm kidding, of course. We were going to get rid of the girl. Because, <laughs> oh my goodness, the girls, it's, everything's a drama and it's all so, and it starts when they're little. My daughter, she's grown now, but when she was six years old, six years old, her first tooth is loose. She's, she's so excited because she knows once that tooth comes out, who's coming? Tooth fairy, right? And there's nothing little girls like better than getting stuff, is there? Right? You don't grow out of that, do you? No, that's... <laughs> That's where it starts, isn't it? Is with the dang tooth fairy. That's so for three days she's wiggling and that tooth finally pops loose and she comes running in and she goes, Dad, 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 right? They won't stop till you say what? They could be two inches from your face making eye contact. They will not stop. I go, what? She goes, get an envelope and a pen. Six-year-old girls are really bossy, all right? I swear this is true. She goes, write this down. Tooth fairy, I want jewelry, not money. <laughs> At six. Yeah, you ladies think that's funny, don't you? So a couple years later, my daughter, she decided to decorate her room for the 4th of July, right? So she got these little stickers of the American flag and she decorated everything she could in her room. All up and down her headboard of her bed, little stickers of the American flag. All up and down the, the bar, bed rail, the footboard of her bed. She went over her dresser, her window, her mirrors, her door. Every place she put one on the end of the doorknob, little stickers of the American flag because it was the 4th of July and she wanted to be patriotic. Those little stickers at that time had cost me 37 cents a piece <laughs> at the post office. Uh, those don't come back off again. We could have mailed her and the bed to the tooth fairy. We had enough postage to make it. I know. And then the teenage years come, and oh my goodness, that's just... By applause, who is or has been the parent of a teenage daughter? By applause, right here. Where are you? See how weak that applause is? I know, they've sucked the life out of you, haven't they? Yeah. Okay, you'll appreciate this joke. The rest of you are going to think we're all bad people, but you're totally going to get this. You, you will understand, all right? Having a daughter, having a teenage daughter makes me feel like a bad parent, like I never felt with my boys. Because I've been angry at my boys, right? I've had my boys do something stupid or they broke something and they come into the room and I see them and I'm angry at them. I've had that emotional exchange with my boys. I've never hated them. <laughs> You see her laughing? Oh, you think we're bad people, but you look at all the parents of teenagers. They know exactly what I'm talking about because they can make you hate them sometimes. They just, they have that ability. And then my ex-wife and my, my daughter used to cycle together. And uh, I'm not talking about exercise, right? All right, you know where I'm at, all right? And that's just, you know. And as a father, you don't even want to know about your little princess having that time. You don't even want to know. It's like, I remember the first, when she was having her first, you know, I don't even like using the word. I'll put one at the end of a sentence to let you know it's done. <laughs> but I don't even like hearing the word, right? We were getting ready to go to a movie, her, her mom and I, and, and, and she goes, hold on, I gotta run in the house one more time because Elizabeth's gonna have her first, and I'm la 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 la. Right? And so um, before we left, he said, hey, it's, um, it's late. You need to be in bed by, by 10 o'clock. We're going to be late uh, later than that coming home. You need to be in bed before we get home. And so we go to the movie. We come back, and it's 11 o'clock, and she's still up. And I say, uh, hey, it's late. You need to go to bed. That's all I said. And I got to experience her first emotional breakdown over nothing. <laughs> she says... I am a human being! I'm covering my face trying not to laugh. Because I'm pretty sure laughing's gonna make it worse. We're not bad parents, it's just late and, and you need to go to bed. And she does this, she goes. Okay, love you, Dad. Oh, that scared me to death. I was waiting for demons to fly out of her, right? Her head to spin around, and my little princess was gone. It was just... I don't know. I think it's good that women have that time every month. I do. It's like that one week out of the month where they just set us straight on everything, right? They just say how it is. No fear. They set us straight on everything that one week. 
That's why they call it men straight. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure that's, that's how they came up. But guys, it's not forever, right? They reach an age where it just, you get a, whole, a pause in that whole thing, right? It just stops. And that's why they call it men, a pause. Because a lot of guys right now trying not to laugh because they don't want their wives to see them laughing. That was fun. Oh, that is funny stuff. What's, what's your name right here, sir? Aaron, could you come up here? Give Aaron a big round of applause. Come on up here, right around here. Over there. There's some stairs right over there. This will be real quick and easy, Aaron. How you doing? You're doing a lot. You're doing better just sitting down. All right, right here. That mic's for you. All right, do you gamble at all, Aaron? Oh, yeah. Do you? Does yeah. he gamble at all? He's a little... I took, is that your wife or girlfriend? I took a chance on her. Is that her? your wife or girlfriend? <laughs> oh, wow. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Wow. <laughs> I think we know who took the chance. <laughs> Touche. All right, all right, all right. So here's what we're going to do, Aaron. Um, you can see these cards are all different from each other, right? Okay, okay. I want you to shuffle them up. Uh, you can use that bar stool if you want, or just shuffle them in your hands, whatever works best for you, but don't change the order. No, I'm just kidding, just shuffle them up. So poker players make their living being able to read somebody's face. See, when they lie, when they tell the truth. Everybody has a tell, something that gives you away when you lie. As you get older, you get better at it. When you're a kid, you're horrible at it. Your parents can see it. Everybody has something. It could be a twitch, a facial tell. It could be a raise of an eyebrow, a little twitch. It could be that they giggle like a little girl. Um, we're going to find out what your uh, facial tell is, all right? Yeah, that's a poker face right there. All right, cut the deck in half. Cut them in half. Cut the deck in half. Take about half of them. Perfect, perfect. Take the cards you cut to, all right? Look at it because it's easier to remember if you look at it. Okay, hold it against your chest where I can't see it. All right. You need to look again. You want to write it down or are you good? He's going to screw this up, isn't he? If you screw this up, though, it's totally not your fault. It's, it's my fault, because I, I picked you. All right? So, <laughs> okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you questions about your card. Every time I ask you a question, you have to answer no. But I need no in a sentence. I can't just have a monotone no. So I'll ask you, is it a red card? You'll say no. It's not a red card. Does that make sense? I'll ask you, is it a black card? You'll say no. It's not a black card. Every time you're going to answer no. Or we're gonna, I'm going to try and see if I could tell your facial tics and when you lie, when you tell the truth. So you look straight ahead. Okay, I got something with me that helps with the questioning. You don't worry about what's going on back here. You just find your own self and look straight ahead. All right, this is Kansas City. What's up? You can look now if you want, Aaron. This is Kansas City. He's... Uh, He's going to ask you questions about your card. Where are we? We are in uh, Utah. Wow, that's a lot of white people. <laughs> that, is a, that is a lot of white people right there. <laughs> I'm a little scared, especially this one. I know, he's going to take a chance on you, though. <laughs> All right, so he's going to ask you questions. You ready for this, Kansas City? I'm ready. All right, you feel weird talking to a dummy, huh? <laughs> I'm used to it. All right, be good. <laughs> You ready, Aaron? You ready? Was it a black no, card? No, I'm not ready. He a little twitchy, huh? He a little twitchy. Was it a black card? No, it is not a black card. Was it a red card? No, it is not a red card. Was it a black card? No, it you is got not a, a black card. with black cards. <laughs> No, I don't have a problem. He got a little vein popping on his forehead. Was it a club? No, it was not a club. Was it a spade? No, it was not a spade. Was it a club? No, was, it was, was not it a club. A club? Was it? I see that little grin on his face. You see that? He lied. He lied. He white. You all lie. 
Was it a face card? No, it was not no, a face it card. It wasn't a Jack Queen King, one of those? <laughs> no, it was, it was an easy question. No, was it, was it, a, was it a 10 or lower? No, it was. was it, was it a no. six or six or lower? No. Was it between a six and a ten? No, it was not. Was it higher than a six? Was it a six? Aaron, was it a six? No, it was not a six. Sometimes this is really hard. <laughs> it ain't tonight. No, it's not. It's not tonight. Was it a seven? No. Was not it, a seven. Was it a seven? No. <laughs> no. You no. see that? He giggled like a little girl. <laughs> he giggled like a girl. He lied. I got it. All right, you got it figured out? I got it. All right, Kansas City's going to guess what the card is. If he gets it right, big round of applause for Aaron in Kansas City. If he gets it wrong, then we're going to stick you <laughs> both in the trunk. <laughs> oh, that's nice, because it gets lonely in there. <laughs> You like puppets? <laughs> It'll be nice, be nice. All right. He's going to guess what it is. I believe it was a seven of clubs. Was it a seven of clubs? Let's take a look. Seven of clubs! You can keep that. It's all sweaty. Big round of applause for Aaron. And a big round of applause for Kansas City. Thank you. Ooh. Thank you, white people. I got to tell you, true story, I was in, uh, you can keep that. No, it's all sweaty now. I'm not, I'm not sticking it back in there. <laughs> true, true story, I was in uh, Wairica, California. Any of you know where Wairica, California is? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, Northern California. It's people that were trying to make it to Oregon and just went, eh, close enough. And uh, I was doing this comedy show. It was a sold out comedy show, 50 people. Because that's all it would seat. It was this, the bar wasn't as wide as between these two pillars, right? It was this skinny little bar and it was long and narrow. And I got up and the stage was six inches high and the audience was as close as this bar stool. And I get up on stage, I go, uh, where's your mic stand? They said, we don't have a mic stand. I go, I need a mic stand. Because when I do magic, I need my hands free. They go, yeah, we don't have a mic stand. I go, I need one. And the guy sitting right in the front row raises his hand. He says, my name's Mike. <laughs> All right, well, then you're it, dude. All right, you're going to have to hold the mic for me. I go, I'll hold it when I do my stand-up, but when I do my magic, I need you to hold the mic. And so, again, the part of my show, I've got one of the town sheriffs up on stage with me, and I've got my puppet. But what happens is, when the puppet starts to talk, he's, <laughs> he's moving the microphone in front of the puppet. And then he moves it back and forth, and he's going back and forth. And the, nobody in the audience even catches what's happening, right? And he's got it so far over, I'm having to lean. I finally go, hey, hey, you realize I'm the one doing the voice, right? And he goes, oh, dang it. <laughs> he's living with scrotum lady now in Albuquerque. That's where he's at. <laughs> Never live that down, huh, the rest of your life. Never live that down. Oh, you guys have been way too much fun. I could do this all night. But it's that time, our big finale. You guys ready for the big finale? The close. What, what, what's your name right here? What's your name? Ashley, come on up here. Give Ashley a big round of applause. Come on over here, Ron. Ashley's going to help us close the show, right? This is going to be quick and easy, Ashley. These people are going to love you. Yeah. Okay, now you can see the cards are all different from each other, right? They're all different. So I don't want you to feel pressure from me. Like, uh, I think sometimes people feel like the magician made them pick that one card. And I don't want you to feel any pressure, right? You take any card you want out of here. Go ahead. Anyone at all? Any? All right. She's easy. It's going to work out good. All right. I didn't mean it that way. Come on. All right. Just random. That's, does that matter right now? He just yelled out, she's pregnant. I don't know what that way. I didn't give you a speaking part, okay? See, this is what happens when everyone gets a trophy, all right? That's what happens. They just think we're all equal. I'm just going to yell stuff. I paid to get here. You didn't. I paid a price. You paid like $10. I paid a bigger price than that to be up here. We're not equal right now. All right. Um, take this pen. Sign your name on the face of the card. Cap's already off the, on the face of it. There you go. And then put a daytime number in case there's an emergency. All right. I'll take the pen. All right. Perfect, Ashley. 
Now, if you'll tell me when to stop as I thumb through there, right there, perfect. Stick your card on there, put your thumbprint right on the back of it. All right, hold your thumb up, let me see your thumb. Perfect. I'm gonna find her card by her thumbprint. Very difficult, not impossible, but very difficult, all right? And usually when I do this, there's thunderous applause. Woo! Not yet, not yet. <laughs> Thank you for that applaud. You're a good audience. <laughs> all right, let me see your thumb again. All right, by her thumbprint, here we go. Is that it? No. That's not it? No. Huh, well that sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> It's nice. Hers is nice. It is. I've smelled bad ones before. I have. But hers is nice. Really. No, ask her after the show. Ask her for a whiff. All right? It's lovely. It is. It's nice. It's like, it's like a little lemon kind of smell to it. It's very good. All right. I've, all right. By the smell of her thumb, I will find her card. And when I do, there'll probably be thunderous applause by the smell. There we go. Is that it? No. That's not it. There's no signature on Yeah, pets at home too, don't you? All right. By the taste, by the taste of her thumb, I will find her card. And when I do, there'd better be thunderous applause. By the taste, here we go. Thank you, thank you very much. Good night.